Good morning. And welcome to It's Trying to Be Sunny Outside This Morning Winnipeg. Yeah, we did have a bit of a sunrise, which I will run in a minute or two. And uh, by the way, uh, Steve, if you're watching this, thanks for phoning this morning. Nice to talk to you. And that sunrise that I was talking about, well, you're going to get to see it. <laughs> yeah, uh, for those of you <clears throat> who don't know, my, my brother's name is Steve. And he phoned me this morning. The reason he called is because uh, today was the 20th anniversary of when our dad passed away. So we sort of reminisced and had a really nice, uh, really nice visit together. Uh, he lives a, quite a ways, he lives about 500 miles as the crow flies east of me. So we don't get together very often anymore. Not like when we were kids. <laughs> anyway, I did come back to the model table and uh, last night and uh, yesterday afternoon a little bit. And uh, we got a little bit more done here. Uh, we're going to be dropping those parts down on the deck after the rollback. Anyway, let's let's just sort of roll back here and uh, see how it is we got to this place. And uh, that was a nice sunrise, wasn't it? This 56 does not paint well with a brush. Well, we got the we got the desired color we need, I guess. Okay, now this side here is actually going to be facing in. This is the side here that we're going to see. I don't know. If there's too much we can do with it. Just have to hope for the best. Okay, being careful now not to uh, break off our little piece of photo etch here. And it's just a little bit loose. If I increase the diameter just slightly here. should uh, yeah that should work probably gonna get paint on uh, mr. T's uh, pointing device but uh, we can always wipe that off later all right 
Well, let's uh, shake up the uh, 66 here. You know, I, I actually have better luck with the larger brush. Might be gonna put two coats on these. Uh... Try and absorb some of the excess off of that, off of that photo edge part there, and then the detail will probably show up afterwards. Okay, let's uh, let that dry, and we'll give it another coat later. Now. How do I hang on to this one? I'll think of something. Okay, I had uh, tried the uh, self-locking tweezer, but it, it just couldn't grab on tight enough. So I've used this system here, it's a little tighter. And of course I'm gonna have to touch up where it's hanging on to. The only other alternative was to fasten it down on something. And uh, I, I think this is gonna work out okay. I'm just hoping that where I where I touch it up now is not going to uh, be too obvious. And here again two coats are going to be necessary. Now I don't I don't need to paint underneath here because that's going to be going on the deck. But I, I did it there anyway because it was sort of built up kind of thick. is going to be a little bit more difficult.
second coat is going to uh, get rid of all those imperfections. I think I'm putting it on thick enough. I wonder, is this the thinned version? Yeah, this is the thinned out one. Maybe I should add a little bit more. Okay, right now I'm looking for what appears to be bare plastic. Oops, I made it worse, didn't I? Okay, let's just leave it. I'm pretty sure that everywhere has, has got some on it, even though it's pretty thin in some places. Okay, we have everything painted twice now. There's uh, two coats of the 66 on this and this, two coats of the 56 on this and this, and of course on this one we use the Model Master Primer and then the 77. Now the 77 did not for some reason want to paint well over the Model Master Primer. I, I was really shocked. I thought it would just go on really nice and uh, but it kind of, uh, I don't know, it, uh, it was almost like there was some sort of a reaction going on. It was sort of like trying to, you know, paint oil on, on water or something like that. It just, it just didn't want to work, but I eventually got it. Unfortunately, I had to put it on so heavy that I have uh, plugged up the little holes that were on the side of the stringer. But at, at arm's length, in fact, even closer than that, you're not going to be able to see that. I, I don't think they're going to, uh, when this shrink wraps, it's going to uh, come out. We'll, we'll take a close look with the macro lens tomorrow, uh, once it's dry. Maybe I'll put it on the, on the, uh, on the superstructure and uh, we'll look at it that way and see it the way it's actually going to be. Uh, yeah, but that's going to be it for, the, for this evening, folks. I know you can't see the clock, but it's about three minutes to eight in the evening. So, uh, yeah, we'll see you in the morning. Well, it is morning. And I'm just going to set our ladder up here on the deck where I'm not going to get it all squashed out of shape here. And uh, I think we'll start with the easy stuff like the Q10 and the H26. And they have to go right here. So we're going to put the macro lens on. Well, maybe maybe the macro lens is sort of overkill. Um, I'll just I'll just recompose here a little bit. And uh, sometimes the macro lens, when you get too close, it's uh, it makes it worse than if you're almost than if you're too far away. At least that's my experience. Oh, uh, I was going to use uh, Tony's tweezers here to to place them, uh, but um, just uh, an update here. If you remember, I had uh, lost the shrink wrap that's uh, it's probably in the vacuum cleaner <laughs> off the uh, tips here. I just wanted to let you know I did order uh, 
shrink wrap from Amazon. It'll probably be here tomorrow. So if, when it comes, if it comes on time, we'll have a box opening tomorrow. If not, then we'll have it on Tuesday. Anyway, let's, uh, uh, remember I drilled a hole in this and stuck a pin up it. Oh, uh, 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 Jeff was saying that, uh, what he does is he'll, he'll drill a hole in something and he'll put a wire in it and then he will glue the wire in place so that it doesn't come off. And then afterwards he just snips the wire off. That's a good idea too. Uh, I've got lots of, uh, soft brass wire. It would be quite easy to actually do that. Okay, let's, uh, let's get recomposed here. Okay, we are recomposed here. And, uh, this wire is in my way. I'm going to very carefully reach over and try and remove it here. And, uh, there, that's, that's a little better. Now it's a good thing I looked at the manual because I do believe that one of these things when I installed them, I installed them 180 degrees the wrong way. I had them with the uh, intake uh, facing facing out onto the deck and actually it was it's supposed to go in facing the, uh, the bulkhead and then there's supposed to be a little bit of a, uh, you might say a, an airspace I guess. And the idea being, uh, mind you, that that doesn't that doesn't look right to me somehow. That seems to be too close. I, I don't think it would be that close. I, I think that once we get our CA thin in in the uh, positioning hole, uh, this this is going to go in there a lot easier. I might have to uh, reposition just slightly here because I want to get in a little bit straighter. Like like this, and the lens here is kind of in my way. So, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to poke you in the eye. Okay, I've spent a few minutes here going through Carlo's drawings to see if I could find, you know, what what he thought that this uh, Q10 here is supposed to look like. Uh, now, this of course would be just his his idea, uh, but he would be more correct than me, I'm sure, and uh, I, I couldn't find it. Um, in fact, I was noticing that most of the drawings that, that are in this book depict the starboard side, uh, except for this one. Uh, well, there are others that don't that depict other the, the port side as well, but this is the ladder that we're going to be putting on, and I thought that that really shows up up good what it probably looked like. And that is undoubtedly a lot closer to what we're going to be putting on. Uh, see if I can carefully get it over here. Okay, where can I put it so you can see it? Should contrast off that white. Anyway, you can see that the that the top of the ladder is is different. I guess I shouldn't look at the monitor and try and manipulate this at the same time, or I'm going to end up having to straighten it out. Okay, let's uh, continue on here. Okay, I, I have put on the macro lens, but I'm pulled back about a foot, about 30 centimeters. And, uh, let's get that back out of there. And, uh, the, the, I'm using it like a telephoto lens, kind of, so it's, it's out of my way, and yet I'm able to get in fairly close here. Now, I want to pick that up and reposition. Now I want to just give it one more try here, a dry run. I just sort of want to envision what would it be like. I I just don't think that looks right. I, I it just does not look right to me. It's it's uh, it wouldn't be that close. Either that or the the little hole the trumpeter drilled in the deck is is too far close to the bulkhead. So I'm going to turn it. If I stop dropping it, that is. I think I'll I think I'll put it like this. That that sort of looks more normal to me. You know, as it would sort of scoop the air. I don't think they'd need to be worrying about waves coming this far back. I mean, this is two thirds of the way back on the on on the uh, on the on the on the deck. If you remember, the the superstructure on this on the Rodney is way near the back. And a 
of course we have we have weathering going on on the deck there, don't we? We've got to twist it a little bit. That's too much. Get it back in just a little. I hope I'm not getting my knuckles in your road. Okay, I think that that's going to meld itself there just perfectly. And like I say, that guck that you see forming in the on the base there, uh, at arm's length, that, that looks like weathering. I don't need to weather now. Okay, just let me move back here. Okay, this has to has to go to the right. There we go. There, that looks better. Okay, let's get this back on. And this is the sort of thing that I can get myself into trouble doing reaching over. Maybe I should be standing up here. And I'm sort of reaching down. We're getting so close to the end now, it'd be a real shame if I had to spend several days repairing something instead of set ourselves back. Because that several days will mean several days it's going to take longer to get to the Iowa, which is, you know, I can almost see it at the end of the tunnel here now. Okay. Um, Let's we're gonna we're gonna save our ladder here for last because I do believe it's gonna give me the most trouble. Ladders always do for some reason. So let's uh, get ourselves repositioned here and uh, make sure I'm not gonna shove anything off the end of the table. And we want to be working right in here, so I guess this one has to come off now. We'll get it. Okay, you realize how large this ship is when you when you think to yourself the end of it, the bow is sticking out over the far end of the table, the model table, and this is a large sheet of plywood here that I'm using as a table, so yeah, anyway, sort of thinking out loud here. Now, it's a good thing that there are positioning pins and holes. I, I'm, I haven't tried this yet. Once again, you're seeing it along with me for the first time. So, is it going to fit or isn't it? I'll I'll, uh, I'll reposition the camera in a second here. Okay, so that goes basically right there. And this one here, our Barbie sun visor, or or not not sun visor, a uh, magnification visor. That's what it looks like. Yeah, that, that's going to go right there. Okay, let's let's reposition and see if we can get the pegs to drop into the holes. Okay, now remember, we don't have any protection wire going over our little very very fragile radar antenna thingies here. So I got to be careful when I'm messing around. Now what I'd, what I'd like to happen is is for these pegs to just drop into those holes and not take any forcing or anything like that. So I'm I'm just wondering if I should try and maybe drill these out because it, it almost looks as though the holes are not exactly spaced properly. Like I can get it to drop into this one here, but then this, this one right here is, uh, it's about a quarter of a millimeter or so off, you know, towards you. And, and yes, I could probably shove it down in there, um, now how about the ones at the back here? Way at the back. I'm just going to have to reach in there. No, make sure I'm not breaking anything off. Okay, that one goes. Okay, so we can, we can get the back one. We can get this one. What about the, and the other one's already fallen into place. 
this one back here. It just it just fell right in. So really, we just got a case that we can't get this one and this one to match up. Now there's something I could do here. I could probably, you know, nip one of those off. But I'd like to somehow. I wonder if, what would happen if I put about a just a little bit of pressure on it here. Will it go down? Well, let's try let's try and get it in this one first. Take it out of this one. We'll put it in this one. And then pull it. That kind of works. You know, I think it's a case of if I was to enlarge this one. And I'm just gonna find a drill bit that is slightly, slightly bigger than that. Okay, this this one here was already in the Tamiya drill from the last time, but I think that's a, that's a little bit bigger than we actually need. This thing doesn't always start right away. I don't know why. Hmm. Oh, there we go. I think it's a case of the brushes maybe get corro corrosion on them and it, it just, uh, yeah, I'm going to put in just a, a one just a little bit smaller than this. Okay, maybe I'll just carefully take this off because I'm going to want to probably vacuum off the debris and maybe what I'll do is I'll I'll enlarge this one as well just just a little here it's probably more than I needed isn't it um, um, Maybe I wonder if I should have one that's a little bit smaller. Is that hole going to show up now? I'm going to drill out the other one. But I think I'm going to get a, a smaller bit than this even. Okay, this one that we just did was 53 thousandths. The one we're going in with right now is 47 thousandths. Not much of a difference. Oh yeah, I can I can see it. Oh, for goodness sakes! I've bent it now. This time I bent it in the other direction. Let me get get this stuff off my hands here. And and all I did was I just barely catch the end of it there. That's the second time now I've bent that. Are we going to survive? Hey, it just dropped into place. Okay, that's good. Um, now, what do I use to glue it down? If I use the CA Thin, which would do a good job, it will also wick into the into the planking which on the other hand sort of looks like weathering because there there would be staining down off of this metal part. This was obviously some sort of steel or iron and it would have rusted and so on and there would have been staining on the deck anyway. But um, maybe it might be a good idea to just, you know, not, not, not do it all the way along. Maybe just do it here and do it here, only on the bottom of course. And, and then put it down. Maybe I could use uh, uh, something like the uh, Revell Contacta. Might be good for that. It wouldn't wick into the into the planking so bad. Just thinking out loud here. Okay, here's the plan. I'm going to use the uh, the ordinary Tamiya cement. Uh, because I think I'll probably be able to do a better job using this applicator that I've complained about to a lot in the past. And uh, because it, it will probably work better than the Revell's applicator on something like this. So what I plan to do here is just put it along the bottom, just here and here, and uh, n nothing here. Okay, at least that, that's the plan. Let's just see how this is going to go here. Well, I, I really only get one shot at this.
So I'm going to try and do it on camera. And uh, I, I know it's not perfectly in focus there. Now, if I put it in like this and then let it drop down, get it in again, get it in the holes to start with, and it is, and we just let it drop down. I'm not moving it around on the deck, and I, I think that actually worked. Now, yes, I'll be the first to admit there are a lot of places where it's not going to be glued in, but all it has to do is just keep it. Oh, I don't believe this. I'm going to end up with this thing broken right off here. As one of the viewers said, metal fatigue. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just get your big clumsy fingers out of there now, Ron. Um, okay. That'll help, but it's no guarantee. All right. Let's work on this one here. I'll reposition. Okay, I don't think I need to worry too much about bending our radar this time. And there's nothing over here like a little uh, Ensign Flagstaff or anything like that that I'd break off because we're saving that for last. Okay, so what we're going to do is, once again, I'm going to put it around the inside and just allow, allow it to, to, to run down. Because if I try to apply it all around here, which is probably the easiest way to go, um, it's going to run out into the planking a little more than it would otherwise here. So I'm um... okay now before that cures. Now we don't want to be smearing it around all over the place. We want to just try and get it locked into into the right spot. There, like that. All right. Now I don't think I. If you notice it, it's already. It's already against the deck here. So why glue it if it's already there? I mean, it's not like we're gonna be out on a heavy sea or anything like that, and there's gonna be waves washing over the stern. Uh, this is gonna be sitting in the model case. I am noticing. Right, right here though, that the glue is oozing out a little bit. So. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to have glinting from that or not. Now we are going to be viewing, we are going to be viewing the ship from this direction. So in all likelihood, we're not going to see that corner anyway. Okay, that's down. Okay, we are almost done. Step 44. As near as I can tell, the only thing that uh, 44 wants us to do now is drop the ladder down. Right here. Okay, I can see by looking in the monitor that this uh, is in your way. Alright, that's good. And it's got to go something like that, only a little straighter of course. I'll reposition, I'll put on the macro lens, it'll get right in, and you can watch me make a mess of this. But you know what? I think there's something far more important than getting that ladder on right now. Hot out of the microwave. Looks like my cheese is a little bit on the uh, crispy side, but I'm sure it's going to be all right. Now, once again, we're not going to uh, belabor this. I'm just going to go ahead and enjoy it. And uh, I wonder if I can pull this down. At least it'll look a little better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to go ahead and enjoy this, and then we'll be back and work on our ladder. Probably in about oh five minutes or so. You know, I may not eat it all right now. Right, what time we got here? 11.46, almost 11.47. It's 
kind of early anyway. Okay, I have just finished editing out everything you've seen up until right now. And once again, I was very surprised at how much I'd taken already. You know, uh, I haven't even done the final edit yet. I've got to upload the video onto YouTube and hopefully it'll be ready by 5 p.m. Winnipeg time. So we're going to have to look after our little ladder in the next episode. Thanks for watching everybody. And all being well, we'll be seeing you tomorrow.